I have a confession to make, and that is that sometimes I make really terrible sounding mixes from really great tunes. And case in point, I recorded some demos on the old Korg M1 back in 1988. Yes, I'm that old. And before I sold my M1, I transferred all of those demos to a DAT tape. And these demos didn't have any names, so I just called them the unfinished. And so here's a tune that I've been working on for years. And this is what it sounded like when I transferred it to the DAT. Now, anyone that owned an M1, you're going to instantly recognize those drums and that pan flute and the drenching of reverb that all of those hounds had on them. And I had to really be careful not to play many notes because there were only 16 notes of polyphony on an old Korg M1. And yep, there's that pan flute. But I love this tune so much, mainly because of that metallic drone in the background. And so I decided to work on this because Korg came out with the M1 virtual instrument. And so I installed that on my computer and then I had access to that sound again. And so I decided to rename the song at play in the archive and I started to work on it. Let's look at the date of this first mix that I really had done, which was on November 17th of 2008. But at this time, I was able to change the key signature to something that was a little bit more guitar and bass friendly from D sharp to actually D minor. And then I started to replace some of those synthetic instruments with real instruments like real bass guitar and uh, Taurus pedals and so forth. And so I started to get a mix that started to sound good. So much more realistic sounding drums, even though they're not real drums. I played those from a VST instrument, but I've got real bass guitar and Taurus pedals, and I added some other synths from the Korg Wave Station. And instead of the pan flute playing the melody, I decided to play it on real theremin. And then it was time to add guitars and some other instruments, and that's when I lost control. Let's go into Cubase. I'm going to play you the last mix that I had that was acceptable. We'll play it just right here from the beginning, and you're going to hear some differences. And so in this version, I added a lot of guitars for my favorite guitar player friend, Kent Ridding. And the problem was that I loved his guitars so much that I just started to add more and more and more. And then I added more and more and more synths. I just had way too much stuff going on. And if you listen to it now, you can hardly hear the theremin and you can hardly hear the drums. So essentially, this was a mix that I had, and I decided that this was the final mix. And now that I listen to it, I am not happy with it. So this is an example of a very troubled mix. And so what I decided to do is go with the concept that less is more. And so I played with a few new versions and I got to version R18 and we're going to basically reset this mix. I've already taken some time and I have pulled out a lot of those tracks. So we've got very few guitars left, just the really critical ones. And I pulled out a lot of different synthesizers too. And in fact, what I did was I disabled those tracks and I dragged them into a folder in my Cubase project called disabled tracks. And if I scroll down here in my track list, you can see that I've put those right here at the bottom of my list. So here are all the tracks that I pulled out of this project. And if I open that folder, you can see that I have them all disabled. They're still part of the project so that I can turn them on and off later if I want to use them, but they're disabled. And you can disable a track by right or control clicking on a track and choosing disable track, 
or in this case, enable track to re-enable it. But I'm going to leave all of these disabled. And now let's listen to where we're going to start, sort of. And let's just play and you can hear a little different mix now. Now, instantly, everything sounds better, but as I started to work on this mix for myself, I decided, you know, I have made so many mistakes in this and covered them up with other treatments that it's just time to start over again. For example, I still can't hear the theremin enough. The drums are there, but they're kind of out of control. And so this course is going to be a little bit different than any course I've ever done, where I've taken a mix that I thought was done several years ago or more than a decade ago, and we're just going to start over again. So I'm going to fall on my sword. We're going to reset this project back to something that we can start working with. And so next, I'm going to show you how to restart a mix. <laughs> 